this is a question from Neil. Is sauna therapy good for cardiovascular health? That's a tough question. And the reason I call that a tough question, there was a great wrestler by the name of Dan Gable. He was a coach of the University of Iowa, like through the 1980s, for example, he won more national championships than any other coach. And he would tell you he loved going in the sauna after a workout. He thought the sauna had benefits. Uh, so he thinks it's good. There's another guy by the name of Martin Paul. He's sort of a famous biochemist and he's a big believer that being warm like in a sauna can increase something called bh4 like tetrahydrobioptin and he thinks that that helps prevent some of the oxidative stress associated with the uh, the no oh no pathway nitric oxide peroxy nitrate pathway so he thinks it's beneficial okay maybe maybe not i don't know about that i'll tell you why i'm hesitant to do that you heat up your whole body in a sauna, including you heat up your 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 cojones. Okay, that's associated with lowering your testosterone production. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Okay, and then I'll tell you another little trick that I do. You know, I'm skinnier than the meat eating, processed food eating people in my family, so I always wear a couple jackets. I wear them on my body here, and I don't wear you know much. You know, I just wear regular one pair of sweatpants below. What I'm trying to say is, all I know is I, I've written you know tons of books, made tons of videos. I got a lot of academic experience. And I can tell you, I know that if I wake up in the morning and I got a sweatshirt, an extra t-shirt, and I'm like really warm in my upper body, I can think faster. And I don't know if that's really having an effect or if it's just a placebo effect, but you get better blood flow. You have lower viscosity blood when you're warm. I don't want to warm up myself below the belt, if you will, because I'm worried about lowering testosterone production. But I know because I spend a lot of time trying to really, really, really fine tune academic optimization. And that seems to help me. So what I'm basically saying is I've heard a lot of good things. And I know there's lots of videos on the internet praising it. There's lots of people in countries where they do it a lot and they claim it's good. But I don't know for sure. But I, I can tell you those are the arguments of why it is good or bad. But I'm scared of anything that will potentially affect the, the cojones, so I avoid it. Is there a difference between like a dry sauna or an infrared sauna, or is that, do you consider them all just too hot? There might be, I don't know, but I, I just avoid them. I sort of said, you know, if you, if you burn your balls, you might not get them back. So I don't want to take that chance. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's funny. Yeah. Right. Well, one other thing on that question, just because I see it a lot, a lot of young guys, they're putting their cell phone in their front pocket, which is like really stupid, you know, because I see young guys lifting weights and, um, I go, hey, genius, why you got your uh, cell phone in your front pocket? You know, because these are all big muscular guys. Young guys are real kind of cocky and arrogant. They think they're so strong and they are pretty strong, you know, when their testosterone is highest. Okay. And what I'm trying to say, though, is that's counterproductive. Keeping your cell phone in your front pocket, low power microwave and, you know, on your cojones there. And I think it might increase your risk of testicular cancer, certainly of testicular atrophy. Women having it in the front pocket might increase your risk of breast cancer in the back pocket, maybe rectal cancer. So I would avoid that. 